Hello Internet, I'm Guy. I'm doing a fun little update on an earlier project that I did. I, I mentioned it in my updates to my milling machine in a previous video. This is the ring light that I'm talking about here. You can see it casts a really nice light around your work area. Uh, it doesn't work so well with a fly cutter or a drill chuck, but for milling cutters and other small uh, tools inside of here, works great. Um, I made the original one out of MDF and painted it red, and that was a quick and dirty way to get it built. And so now I want to upgrade it, and I thought about maybe using a big chunk of half-inch aluminum that I have, and I thought, nah, maybe not. It's, that sounds like a lot of work, and I happen to have a big slab of half-inch Delrin, uh, otherwise known as acetylcopolymer. Uh, so this will be really easy to work on the lathe. And I have a couple of tricks that you might find helpful there. I also want to mention uh, this wonderful little sewing machine light that magnetically attaches to the column. This is a great little add-on. So I'm going to have links below to both the ring light and this little sewing machine light that I also mentioned in a previous video. But it's well worth mentioning again. Uh, the neat feature about it is you can just pick it up and stick it to the column anywhere you want. It'll just, just stick there beautifully. Um, I've, I love the combination of the two, actually. So let's get going. My first step is to measure the diameter of the spindle. I have a classic um, caliper here that is all in inches and fractions and also centimeters for you European types. Um, so I'm just going to measure that and see what the nearest drill size would be. Uh, that's close to one and five eighths. Okay. It turns out that I have a full set of Forstner bits. Um, those of you who work with wood will be familiar with a Forstner bit. This is a one and five eighths bit. So I'm going to start by making a hole in the center and uh, working out from there. I've removed the ring light from the mill. It was attached with double stick tape. Uh, what I'm planning to do on this iteration is to put magnets, several of them on here, so it will magnetize up to the head of the mill. Um, I've drawn a quick circle here, just a rough circle for cutting it out on the bandsaw. And then I've set this in place and I'm going to use the Forstner bit as a centering tool and just find a center. Now I know where to drill that hole. So first I'm going to cut this out. Oh, actually, no, I'm not. I think I'm going to start by just using this surface to clamp it down on my drill press and drill the hole first, then I'm going to cut it out. I have the Delrin securely clamped down to the drill press, so here we go. That was fun. Now I'm on my 14 inch woodworking bandsaw to cut out this circle. Okay, that's a nice rough circle. I have it mounted to the lathe, and it looks like it's a little uneven. I've got a lot of uh, material to remove, so let's get started. Let's see how that's looking. Yep, getting pretty close. Get rid of some of this dross here. I'm gonna clean up the outside edge there. This will be the bottom surface. That's a nice clean bevel. And I just flipped it over so I can bevel the back edge, clean it up. That will come off nicely. That looks pretty good. I've ground off the outer edge of the cutter here so that when it engages the cut, it'll clear the radius. So I'm going to mount this in here. Go back to my setup and right there. So I'm going to continue. I have to keep stopping to remove all the dross that comes off. 
Um, I'm going to be watching my DRO on my carriage so I can tell it to go to about 0.25 inches. What a mess. Getting there. Wow, actually stalling the lathe at that radius. I think that's about deep enough. Let's get the ring light and have a look here. Oops. Okay, it looks like I have to open it up a little bit. Uh, oh, actually, no, if I flip it around, it will drop right in. Not quite. Yeah, I've just got to move the inner radius just a little bit there. Let's see if that did it. Seat of the pants engineering here. I think that's the inside radius fine. Now I just work on the outside radius. So to open up that outer radius, I'm going to use my boring bar because it's boring. Yeah, I know. I think it's binding up a little bit in the bottom, but that might be good. Let's have a look. Yep, aside from the wire here, I think this is going to drop in there. Let's just flip it over and have a look. Yeah, I could open it up just a bit more, so I think I will. So I'm going to deburr the edges here, not because they're sharp, but just for pure aesthetic reasons. That looks nice, as nice as Delrin gets. It never takes a really good finish. So one more test fit here. I'm going to put it in backwards because the wire is coming out off the back. And oh yeah, that's a that's a perfect snug fit. I probably won't even need to glue it in, but one does, of course. So this is the way it would go. Um, I just can't get it in there because of those wires. I'm going to have to make little notches for the wires here. I've marked off where the two wires come out here on the outer edge of this radius and I'm going to use my Dremel cutter. Now this is a set of PC board drilling bits that are often sold cheap, surplus, used uh, with a tooth like this. This is the kind that's used to route the outer edge of a circuit board um, and I find it incredibly helpful. They're a very useful tool. This will go right through this. I also have this set of carbide cutters, which are really great, but they're a little too big for this application. I'll put a link to these below, and if I can find a link to these, I've had them for decades, uh, but it's always good to have some of these around in your shop. All right, a little bit of whittling with a uh, X-Acto, and I pulled out the gummy uh, tape residue from the back of the ring. So now it just drops in really nicely. Oops. So the little wires line up just perfectly right there, and it drops in perfectly flush. So my next step is to mount some magnets in this inside radius here so it'll um, magnetically attach to the bottom of the mill head. I have a bunch of neodymium high power magnets that are just over 3 eighths of an inch uh, diameter. And I'm going to put, whoa, yes, and they're very lively. Um, I'm going to put three of them right here on the radius and it's going to be a, a 25, uh, you know, what is the diameter here? 25 64 drill bit, yes. So ideally, this is going to be a little undersized. I'm going to drill three holes in here and then maybe press fit them in because Delrin is so forgiving, it'll just let me do that. So I'm going to drill to a depth of 0.23 inches using my DRO as a reference. <laughs> Thank you. 
That first hole was one drill size undersized, so now I'm going to sneak up on the final dimension. Let's see if that's going to fit. Oh yes, that's going to fit very snugly. Deburring is uh, tough with Delrin. It still wants to mung up a little bit. So here's a test fit of the magnet. It goes in, and it's going to protrude just enough that it's not uh, hidden behind the plastic. But there we are. These things are so strong. Uh, they just stick to everything. It's ridiculous. All right, let's try another one here. Oh, yeah, it's just a slight, slight, slight force to force it in, which is just what I wanted. So I'll shoot a little bit of glue in there as well. So I'm going to use Bob Smith Instacure Super Thin Glue. Get the cap off, and then just I'm going to put a little drop just right around the edge. There, just a little bit around the rim, and just drop it in. Slide the magnet over. Same thing here. Just a little bit right there around the edge. Oh, no, don't stick there. Slide it over. A little bit of glue on there. Plop it in. Slide it over. And I think those are going to set in there really nicely. So let's offer this thing up here. There's the three magnets. Oh, yeah, of course, it's sticking to the spindle. Oh, it's not attaching very well. Well, oh, I have two problems. One is I've got to clear around that little shaft, which is the motor shaft, one of them. And uh, that ring up in there, that's not ferrous. I'm going to have to come up with plan B here. Oh my goodness, it's Christmas. Who knew? Green plastic, really? Well, that's going to be interesting. I'm going to have to put some kind of ferrous material in there to engage the magnets, and that's going to be challenging, to say the least. So I'm using a 3 quarter inch uh, carbide woodworking router bit to hog out that space around the little shaft that's up in there. I'm doing a second pass. That should work. So I've got the clearance here for the shaft that's sticking down. Oh, bumping into the magnets again. There we go. That's going to work. It's a little, a little tender. What's happening now is these magnets are actually aligning with the bolts just very slightly there. So there is some magnetic attraction there despite this plastic ring. So I think that's good enough. So I've got it lit up and I'm offering it up there, trying not to snag it on the spindle with the magnets. Oh yeah, that looks pretty sexy. Well, except this edge light is going to be bothering me a little bit, so I'm going to put some black uh, crepe tape around the outside edge, I think. Okay, a little black tape uh, wrapped around the outside edge takes care of that light leak around the sides. And yeah, it's going to sit there just fine. This wire will tuck up there out of the way. So here's another view with all the bright movie lights turned off. And that, that lights the table beautifully. If I uh, lower the head down, you can see that the work area immediately below the cutter is really well lit. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video or you found it helpful or useful, please give me a like or subscribe. Um, leave me a comment if you like. I'll put links in the description below to everything you've seen here that would be relevant to the video. And I hope to see you next time.